Today we head towards uh, head south towards Lisbon from Porto, and the winds are looking good overnight. Tides are against us, but we've only got a mile to go off the river, so hopefully we can make it out. If not, we'll turn around and come back later. We made it out of the marina successfully. It's kind of a tight one. I had my uh, my neighbor kind of guide the bow out. The thing with these uh, full keels ones is in reverse, you really can't steer, so it's kind of helpful to have someone shove the bow so it doesn't go downwind. And that seems to work pretty good. I could have done it myself too, I suppose. So we will see what the currents are going to do up here. So far the currents are not so bad. So I think we'll make it out in about 15 minutes and then the sails are going up and it'll be about a 24 hour sail uh, south. And there's lots of spots I could, there's like two or three spots I could stop on the way. I'm not sure where I'm going to stop yet. We will see. And I got my sails up. I opted for a reef down mainsail and then the full headsail. We'll just use the mainsail to kind of stabilize us and then the jib to get our power. That feels like it's working pretty good. Doing about six knots. So that was nice that the current wasn't too bad. And it's a nice sunny day. Now that I wear it off a little bit, I can probably take the jacket off. Should be a nice easy passage. Just got to keep an eye out for fishing boats. The wind vane seems happy with this course so far. So we made it about 20 miles and then the winds got kind of light so I headed out further offshore to try to get some stronger winds. And that was going okay. And then the winds just switched 180 degrees and now they're coming from the south. So I put away my whisker pole, uh, took the preventer off, started heading upwind. And then the winds died again. Not sure where they're coming from now. Okay, they've They're just all over the place. So bizarre. So now the winds have shifted back from the north again. They let, like five minutes, they're coming from the south, and then by the time I got all that stuff sorted out, they're coming back again from the north. So now I think I'm going to put the whisker pull out and the preventer again. I just don't know what's going on here. So about, we've had about five more wind chains, changes. It goes up to about 15 knots. Get everything close hauled. Those sails out. That's right, right when I get it set up, wind switches 180 degrees from behind. Get the preventer out, put the jib away. <laughs> wind dies. It's like, I almost don't like having the preventer out because it keeps jive, like trying to jive across and I don't like when it, the preventer catches it. But as you can see, without the preventer, that boon would just be going everywhere. And it already kind of is. Wind died last night and it's been bobbing around here if all night. Somehow the swell has gotten worse, even with no wind. Or maybe it's just gotten to some resonance frequency that's making the boat pitch back and forth hard. Wind has finally started up a little bit. I'd say about 
seven knots of wind. I'm gonna take out the spinnaker. Hopefully it hasn't gotten too moldy for being left on the boat over the winter. It looks okay, I think, from the outside. Autopilot steering. Yeah, a little bit of breeze. This will be the first time I've set up the spinnaker this year, so I'll just do it carefully and hopefully not mess anything up. Wind's supposed to pick up a little bit this afternoon, but we might be able to fly it all day if it doesn't get too strong. I think we're all set up. Let's give this a try. Go. It's kind of struggling to stay open. I'm gonna move a little bit to the right now. Yeah. Might never bend out the boom. Okay, that's working. It's really hard to get to stay open today. I'm not sure. Am I doing something wrong? No, it's kind of working. I need to go the right though running the shore here. After a couple hours of the spinnaker, the wind shifted out of the west. And now I had to put the spinnaker away after we broached. And I want to put it in its bag so I can take it out of the cockpit, but it's a little bit damp. So once that happens, I'll put it away and then we can turn the autopilot off and switch the wind vane. But I think if I put the wind vane on now, the spinnaker is in the way of the wind vane. Spinnaker packed up. Wind vane is steering. Still pretty good swell out here. Coming up on another sailboat. I think he's gonna pass us. So we are going to pull into the harbor here. So here is our track. I only made it about 70 miles. I was hoping to go further. And that was a 30 hour trip, so not great speed, but we just, I ended up stopping at Fear Greater Falls. So I came into the marina here and uh, I didn't film last night cause it got dark, but I'm gonna go climb up the mast. And uh, this is the camera, which I took off cause I thought it was broken. I brought it down and I realized it was working. Here's our camera reinstalled, took off the wind sensor. Let's give that a work, give that a shot and see if it works. So maybe it's the wiring, maybe the wiring is bad. So I found, I found uh, someone else doing interesting stuff on the sailboat. This is uh, Johannes. Hi. Uh, he's, this is his boat here. What kind, what kind of boat do you have here? Uh, she's uh, designed by Alan Buchanan in 1965. Um, I refer to her as a small 21 feet pirate boat. Yeah, it has a, has a really cool, cool look to it. 
at the moment taking me to the Mediterranean Sea. Well, she took me through already to through 40 knots of wind and uh, brave little boat. And uh, the greater plan would be uh, my circumnavigation as a first person with autism. And uh, well, let's see uh, how far she carries me. And you started in uh, in Germany. Yes, exactly. Uh, well, it's uh, in the northern part of uh, of the Netherlands. Uh -huh. It's got a salty look to it. I like it. it looks like very sturdy rigging too. Oh, that's, so that's a nice actuator, and then the the, the 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 autopilot part is below deck, so you kind of keep yeah. them separate. ACU 100. Um, yeah, I'm just using the tiller pilots, and I go through them. Uh, you you un, mean un, like <coughs> this one? Yeah, yeah. So, so I, that's I, my redundancy. That's my backup. Yeah, unit. I had I had one of those, and that kind of cut out of me. And I've got three of the uh, Simrad Simrad versions. We fitted a hydro generator because uh, there was no space for the wind vane because ah. it's a 21 feet uh, catch or she's a yawl. Oh, that would kind of get in the way uh, of the. Talked to most manufacturers of the wind vanes, yeah. and uh, there is no real wind vane that would fit seamlessly below the mizzen boom. Right. So I just use the space for hydro generator for uh, electricity. Um, as, as for steering, I have the little uh, Raymarine autopilot for oh. when I'm on the motor. Otherwise, I just trim out with a with the two sails, or I use a sheet of tiller. That's why I have a little rubber here. Oh, okay, a sheet of tiller. Exactly. So that's been working for you on. Work. I, I I've, I've tried it on my my short my fin keel boat the twenty three and never really worked. But I've been meaning to try it on my long I keel. It, I always thought the boat would go just in a straight line. Yeah. But um, it is it is I have it, I realized it's more of a like wobbling your yeah. way in, steadily in one direction. So if you're like uh -huh. on on um, short distances it's it can be quite off. But if you are like doing fifty miles, yeah. you will get you will get oh, okay. roughly to your destination. The wind vane does a little bit of wobbling, but not quite as much as no, no, the no, sheet of tiller. Yeah. Sheet tiller does much more. more. Okay. That, my problem was like with a smaller boat, like every wave, it would not, once it knocked the boat off too far, of course, it wouldn't be able to correct. But I think a bigger boat, like or with a long keel, maybe it would be yeah. more reliable. Probably just more figuring, you know, fiddling with it too. I built and I got a special, I got a special propeller uh -huh. that uh, is optimized for low speeds. Ah, and what, what brand of? Uh, uh, Ocean Power. It's Ocean a small Power, German okay. one. It's a, only it's a one man company and uh -huh. he, he builds them all by himself. Uh, it's a mix out of uh, um, C uh, it's a machined uh, aluminum, stainless steel, and uh, some uh, fiberglass. And these brackets are uh, and the mountings are individual for each boat. Okay. And they are all 3D printed. But so far, ah, extremely okay. durable. I have been knocked, not knocked a thing against some things, and yeah, till today it works absolutely. And you said 17 amps. How fast max, were you going? The maximum I got out of it. It's, it's like, like five knots, six knots, seven knots. Seven knots. Okay. How much, how, how much, what do you get at normal speeds? Like four or five knots? Uh, my like... my uh, speedometer says that my average cruising speed is like three and a half. Three and a half? 3.7. But then how many amps would you get out of that? Would it be anything usable? Five, five. Oh, okay, so still yeah. usable power, yeah. cool. I didn't, yeah, realize, uh, I didn't realize you got that much power out of those things. That's yeah. pretty good. What is the, uh, the Japanese looking? That is uh, Signal Flag 1, that is a uh, single-handed sailor. Oh, single-handed. So it's mostly recognized in the Netherlands. It's not, ah. not as popular internationally. Yeah, the Dutch guy was, I was like, I kept running into, had the same flag. I meant yeah, to ask because him. Because of my looks, usually people refer to it as a Japan flag. Yeah. <laughs> I have not, I don't even have Japanese roots. Yeah. I love the, uh, the stanch, the, the handrails you got here. They're like actual, like, full-sized railings on a boat uh, this small. I think that's really nice. Yes, inspired by Amel because they also have the fixed one and uh, uh -huh. was my because I wanted it uh, high because I'm young and lazy so I usually forget yeah. or, or don't want to, to hook myself in so I wanted something that I cannot basically cannot go overboard anymore. Uh -huh. and, uh, but also the pirate lines. Yeah, yeah, what's the story have, behind these? I have a function because okay. uh, I don't have uh, my lines run to the cockpit yeah. so you can basically just lean yourself in. Oh, uh, okay. Would be no, no guard the guardrail would be yeah. ridiculously high uh -huh. to prevent me then from going overboard. <laughs> Brilliant, that's just a smart thing. <clears throat> and again, it looks cool too on the top of that. Yeah, definitely. And what's the story behind this uh, spool here? Well, that's uh, some, some big line. The fishermen use that as, uh, in the Netherlands for the big ships as moving lines. So I got one of that. Um, I plan to use that uh, as a makeshift rogue um, with an IKEA bag. I was told IKEA bags are like literally indestructible and uh, just tie it around and uh -huh. uh, tie it uh, on, the, on the end of the line and just completely spool it out and secure it to, the, to one of the or two of the cleats uh -huh. and use it as a drogue. And I already had, uh, had an opportunity to use it as a um, as a tow line for for some for another sailboat, it was an engine failure. Ah, okay. And that thing is uh, rated as eighty tons. Is it polypropylene? I guess. Uh, I don't know. It's I think it it's floats though, right? Square line. Okay. It's like 
it's like 80 tons and yeah so it's basically yeah it looks super strong yeah. people want to check out you uh follow you what do you have an instagram or a youtube channel yes i actually i would have both so my instagram is uh, salty nomad life and uh, so it's brand new with uh, like five subscribers and uh, my youtube is uh, pava navis sailing that's also the name of my boat uh, pava navis is latin and means uh, small ship Oh, very cool. I'll put a link to those on the screen and in the description. Oh, look at all these little fish. So many. The whole marina is full of fish. Yeah, my hand scares them away. A new pump for the dinghy. Of course, I paid way more than the dinghy actually cost to get this pump, but whatever, I need a pump. Thanks for watching. In the next video, I'm gonna sail down to Nazare to meet up with my friends Andre and Gemma and to do some paragliding along the cliffs there.